Hello, it's me, Mr. Plinkett. I'm not dead yet. I'd like to talk about a few things I noticed in the movie Halloween Ends. It's not as bad as your friends tell you it is. Despite the fact that many people were disappointed that the old Michael Myers didn't just stab people again the whole time, the way this movie was shot and a lot of the details in the script are pretty good, actually. It's a little anti-hero film about transformation and the nature of what makes people evil. A shockingly thoughtful premise coming right after the embarrassingly bad Halloween kills. <laughs> Let's talk about the general motif of change and all the symbolism. Themes of transformation are all over the place. The obvious one is the Catalyst family in the opening scene. The dad at the beginning is playing the piano in his mansion. Later on we see him playing pool in some filthy bar. Same with the mom and her downfall. The house itself visually is a symbol of negative change. And the piano keys is a motif that's repeated. So this is our inciting incident. What caused this? The little brat kid, that's who, and the other overbearing mother in the film. She warns Corey that her kid is scared of stuff and he wets the bed. Jeremy's been afraid of the dark. He's been wetting the bed at night. Turns out he's a mean little prick that loves violence, gore, and teasing people. He's the first awful person in this town that's turned rotten. <laughs> It's time to lock your doors. He's literally a little werewolf that changes form at night. He wears a mask. There are many indications of the importance of masks in this film, stemming from the Halloween theme, of course. Allison claims to, quote, not have a costume at one point. Do you have your costume for the party? I told you, I don't want to go alone. So I'm not going. Indicating that she's an open person who isn't hiding anything. Unlike her doctor boss and that shameful nurse, who ironically dress in their own sort of costumes at work, hiding deep dark secrets underneath. And at the doctor's house, their true nature is revealed. A monstrous pervert and a gold digging s When Allison finally does get a mask, her disposition and motivations change. So let's quickly talk about some visual motifs, parallels, and basic setups and payoffs. They set up the malfunctioning microwave that blows up food when you try to cook it. It's used later to startle Michael so that Lori Strode could attack him. <laughs> they also set up the location of the fire extinguisher when Lori burns her Halloween pie or whatever. So we know it's there, and it just didn't come out of nowhere when she grabs it to beat Michael Myers with it before throwing a refrigerator on him. And also, Allison's car makes a rattling sound. It's mentioned many times throughout the film. So my car's been rattling. Rattling? Pulled you over because it looks like your muffler's about to fall off. Better get that fixed for you. I have a bigger problem with you. This is what Corey hears outside at the end, which indicates that he knows that it's Allison that's pulling up outside the house. That's what makes him stab himself in the throat to frame the Grandma Lori Strode and ruin their relationship. And one final act of evil. In the beginning, the kid throws a paper airplane at Corey. Later in the film, when Corey's in the abandoned house, Lori Strode is there, rocking on the chair. She also throws the paper airplane. This is a callback to indicate that Lori really isn't there. She's inside Corey's head. Corey sleeps on the floor of the empty house in the exact spot where the kid died. He then dies in basically the same spot, but in a different house. His character's descent is visually and metaphorically displayed by images of him at the top of the stairs at the start of the film, and then the bottom of the stairs at the end. Now there are the obvious visual clues to compare Michael Myers and Corey Cunningham, but some of the more noteworthy ones are, Corey wears a mechanics uniform, just like Michael Myers. His name is also alliterative, CC and MM. In Halloween 4, Michael Myers steals a tow truck, and in this film, Corey uses one to kill people with. 
Also, in a similar POV shot from the original Halloween, Corey grabs a kitchen knife out of the drawer to kill his mother. When the dad of the dead child is talking in the bar about trying to forgive Corey, very prominently behind him are neon dice on the wall. Their numbers add up to 12. In numerology, the number 12 stresses the importance of ridding your life of negative energies, ending toxic relationships, leaving a bad job, and approaching all situations with a new optimistic attitude. Then let's take a look at some transformation clues. Now it's no secret Corey is transforming into something evil. It's the f***ing plot of the movie, but the script has some lovely subtleties in it. First off, of course, the pumpkins in the opening credit sequence symbolize evil, changing shape, or taking on a new form. There's a mention of the death tarot card early on in the film. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I got the death card. No, that just means a major phase is ending and a new one is about to begin. There's a bit of visual symbolism of him transforming from his regular pedal bike to a more powerful motorcycle. I'm actually getting rid of the bike, so if you want it, you can have it. I got a motorcycle. Which is given to him by one of the few people in the town that are actually nice to him. His dad or stepdad or whatever that weird looking pear-shaped man is. Corey also loses his glasses because they get stepped on by the bullies. Usually when a character has a change of vision in a movie, it's a pretty obvious metaphor for seeing the world differently. Now Corey likes chocolate milk. But in the film, he never gets to drink it. In the beginning, he takes out the carton, but doesn't get a chance to open it. And then he purchases a bottle at the gas station, which leads to the most important scene in the whole film. The moment that Corey finally snaps. I know who you are. You did something messy. I can't believe they let you off. You're that psycho babysitter. What, what the fuck? What the fuck? Is he squeezes the glass milk bottle and it breaks in his hand. Now this whole scene happens right in front of an ice machine with a giant logo for something called Triangle Ice. A triangle represents manifestation, enlightenment, revelation, and a higher perspective. It is often used to mark the cycles of growth that lead to a higher state of being. Our Egyptians viewed pyramids in the same way. That's why they were used as tombs, a vehicle for transcending beyond the human form into something new and greater. Corey's cut on his hand is mentioned to be infected. Lori calls evil an infection. The suffering Michael caused became an infection, passing on to people who never even crossed his path. Allison says about his wound, Don't want to get infected. Then later she looks at his hand and just says, Infected. This is also no doubt meant to be a parallel of the Christian concept of stigmata and Corey's eventual crucifixion by the town's and Lori's ideals and paranoia. Now you see, Corey was always fascinated with transcending. He wanted to attend college and become something better. After that failed, he talked about the radio tower and reaching the top of it. When I look up at that tower, I wonder if I could climb at the top. The radio tower is later seen on fire. The radio tower and its importance was also foreshadowed in Halloween Kills. This repeated theme or idea of the radio station and the DJ broadcasting also comes into play. It works as a metaphor for the external evil that Laurie spoke of in the house. You know, there are two kinds of evil. There's the evil that exists as an external force that threatens the well-being of the tribe. The other kind of evil lives inside us, like a sickness or an infection. Corey is affected by the constant negative energy of the town, constantly permeating his brain. The bullies, the people whispering about him, and generally being ostracized. It burrows into him like an earworm, like a song, or like an annoying radio DJ. And once Willie get in the ear, it's like your favorite song stuck in your head. <laughs> Lastly, Corey dies by his own hand in a final gesture of a love that is forbidden. Laurie Strode, ironically in trying to stop evil, created it. <laughs> oh! Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm just waiting for Allison. Two ill-fated lovers, Corey and Allison, struggled to find their place in Haddonfield. They did everything they could do to fit in and live normal lives, but they struggled. Then finally, when free of their confines and allowed to be themselves, they get pulled right back down by the paranoid, mask-wearing, fearful town that is Haddonfield and Laurie Strode.
Oh, and then Michael Myers pointlessly shows up to fight Lori and they throw him in a meat grinder. The end. Michael Myers is so old it should be called Halloween Depends.